For this video, I'm going to demonstrate how the dynamic plugin processing works in Pro Tools. First thing that I'm going to do is to make sure that the dynamic plugin processing is engaged in Pro Tools. I can do that by going to the Setup drop down menu and selecting the Playback Engine and checking the dynamic plugin processing box. Now I'm going to go to the Window drop down menu and select System Usage so I can keep track of my system usage. This shows me how much plugin processing I'm using with my current mix. Now I have a group set up in such a way that any change I make with the plugin parameters will follow every single plugin of that group, which is all the audio tracks you see. That changes all of the plugin parameters on that single insert across all of the tracks that I have in that group. The first plugin I'm going to select is the Eventide Ultra Channel because it's one of the most processor intensive plugins that I have. When I turn it on, you can see that it uses 15% of the plugin processing across all of my CPU cores. After a few seconds, that plugin processing power drops to zero because no audio is going through any of those plugins right now. When I press play, and as the playhead hits those audio regions, all of a sudden the computer takes hold of that CPU usage. After a few seconds after the end of the audio regions, you'll see the CPU usage drops back down to zero because there are no audio regions to process. Once the playhead hits the next audio regions, you'll see it takes that CPU usage again. Then you'll see it releases the CPU usage again after a few seconds after the end of the region. Now I'm going to create a blank audio region which contains nothing but digital zero. I can create this by highlighting a selection and then going to the edit menu and selecting consolidate clip. This is to see if the CPU usage needs actual audio to process or if it's just looking for regions. You can see that when the playhead hits the blank audio regions, it indeed does take CPU usage for the plugin processing. This is as I expected. And then it eventually releases the processing power again. Now I'm going to turn off the Ultra Channel plugin and select a different type of plugin. I'm going to select the Waves SSL channel. You'll see that this is a much more processor efficient plugin, however, the processing power is not released at all no matter what I do. Regardless of whether I'm playing audio regions through it or not, it's still using the same amount of CPU power. Now this is because there's a constant noise that's inherent with the plugin. That's part of the Waves physical modeling of the SSL channel. Now the plugin does give me the option to turn the noise off by clicking on the analog switch of the SSL channel plugin. With the noise turned off, now the plugin processing power is dynamic with the audio regions. You can see now that the plugin processing power of the channel G plugin is now dynamic and releases the processing power just like the Eventide Ultra Channel did. Next I'm going to place the Ultra Channel plugin in series after the SSL channel with the analog switch turned off. This is to see if multiple clean channels will both be dynamically processed with audio regions. 
You can indeed see that both of those plugins are dynamically processed by Pro Tools at the same time. You can see when I turn the analog switch back on the SSL plugin that the plugin processing power of both plugins is no longer dynamic. That's because the ultra channel is now processing the noise from the SSL channel that's constantly being output. For my next test, I'm going to place the SSL plugin after the Ultra Channel plugin. That way, the Ultra Channel isn't processing noise that's being constantly output from the SSL plugin. This is to see if Pro Tools will release the processing power of the Ultra Channel plugin because it's not receiving anything until it sees any audio regions. You can see with the addition of the SSL plugin after the Ultra Channel plugin, Pro Tools still treats both those plugins as if they were both active all the time, regardless of whether there's audio going through it or not. Pro Tools will not dynamically release the processing power of that first plugin, even though it's not processing anything. With Pro Tools, either everything's dynamic or nothing's dynamic on a single track. Keep this in mind if you drop an analog modeling plugin across every single channel. If you do, Pro Tools isn't going to dynamically process your plugins. The exception to this I found were the Steven Slate plugins. Even the virtual tape machine were dynamically processed. Those plugins didn't output any noise when there weren't any audio regions.